Let us start with module 2. Module 2 is the design of transformers. So in this module, we have to design the core windings as well as cooling systems for transformers. Before going into the detailed design, let us compare different types of transformers. So we know that there are different types of transformers like a single phase and three phase transformers, core type and shell type transformers, then distribution and power transformers etc. So let us compare all these transformers. What are the similarities and differences between the transformer categories? So first let us compare the single phase and three phase transformers. So if we are considering the windings, so we know in case of a single phase transformer there are only two windings one primary winding and one secondary winding. So whereas in case of a three phase transformer there will be six winding. So each of the phase will have one primary winding and one secondary winding. So in total there will be six windings. So the next factor that we have to consider is the winding connection. So in case of a single phase transformer we know there are only two windings so there will be four winding terminals. So each of the winding will have two terminals. So in total there will be four winding terminals and there is no special connection possible. So no special connection is used in single phase transformers. But in case of three phase transformers as there are six windings there will be 12 winding terminals and they can be connected either in star or in delta. So next one is the application. So single phase transformers are usually used for low power applications like TV, microwave oven, phone charger etc. So a three phase transformer is usually having a high rated power and it is used as power or distribution transformers in the power system network which is having a high rated KVA value. So next one is about the cooling system. A special cooling system is not required for a single phase transformer. So we know single phase transformers are usually designed for low power ratings. So heat dissipated will be not a very high value. So they do not need a specially designed cooling system. But in case of three phase transformers they are high rated transformers they will be having a very high output power so temperature rise in the transformer will also be very high so there should be special means for dissipating this temperature so three phase transformers needs a specific cooling system based on its rating so next factor is the core in single phase transformers laminated silicon steel core is used we know that core is laminated in order to reduce the eddy current loss. And we use silicon steel for reducing hysteresis loss. So single phase transformers uses a laminated silicon steel core. So three phase transformers also uses the same type of core. A laminated silicon steel core can be used but the size of core will be higher than that used for a single phase transformer. We know size of core used for a three phase transformer will be higher than that used for a single phase transformers. So now we compared, we have compared single phase and three phase transformers. So we can choose a single three phase transformer unit or a bank of three single phase transformers for three phase applications. So as a three phase transformer we can either use a single three phase transformer or a bank of three single phase transformers. Okay. So three phase applications, three phase systems, we use a three phase transformer in the unit. We use a phase in corresponding to a single phase transformer. We use a bank of transformers. UCA. So here we are going to consider the advantages and disadvantages of using a single three phase transformer unit. Moon single phase transformer will chair 
ഒരു ത്രീ ഫേസ് ട്രാൻസ്ഫോമർ യൂണിറ്റ് ആക്കാം അല്ല ഒരു ഒറ്റ യൂണിറ്റ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം സൊ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു സി ദ അഡ്വാൻറ്റേജസ് ആൻഡ് ഡിസ്അഡ്വാൻറ്റേജസ് ഓഫ് എ സിംഗിൾ ത്രീ ഫേസ് ട്രാൻസ്ഫോമർ യൂണിറ്റ് സൊ ദ അഡ്വാൻറ്റേജസ് ആർ ഫസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് കോസ്റ്റ് അറൗണ്ട് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ലെസ് ദാൻ ത്രീ സിംഗിൾ ഫേസ് യൂണിറ്റ്സ് ഇഫ് യു ആർ യൂസിങ് എ സിംഗിൾ യൂണിറ്റ് എ സിംഗിൾ ത്രീ ഫേസ് ട്രാൻസ്ഫോമർ യൂണിറ്റ് കോസ്റ്റ് വിൽ ബി ലെസ് It is around 15 percentage less than 3 single phase units. It occupies less space than bank of 3 single phase units. So if we are providing 3 single phase transformer corresponding to each phase, the size of that system will be very high. Whereas a, a single unit of a 3 phase transformer occupies less space. Okay. The disadvantages are For very big transformers, it is impossible to transport a large three-phase unit to the site. Okay, if that particular transformer, that single three-phase unit is designed for a very high power application, it will be having a very huge size. So, transportation difficulties will be there. Whereas, if we are using three single-phase units, we can transport them easily, separately transport them. each single phase unit each single phase transformer can be separately transported so transportation is easier if we are using a bank of three single phase transformers rotta three phase unit edrikumbo its size will be very high so transportation will be difficult so next point is with three single phase units if one unit of the bank becomes out of order then the bank can run as open delta okay if we are using a three phase transformer a single three phase transformer if there is any fault in the transformer it goes out of order there will be discontinuity in the supply whereas if we are using three single phase units and one of the transformer becomes out of order we can run the remaining two transformers in open delta this maintaining the continuity of supply so rendu three phase sorry otta three phase unit aan use cheyanengil transportation difficulties undu plus adin endengil fault vannal we have to take it out of service so in the case of three single phase units if any one of the transformer has any fault we can replace that unit we can take that unit out of service and remaining two units can work in open delta giving output supply so these are the advantages and disadvantages of a single three phase transformer unit so now let us compare distribution transformers and power transformers so we are familiar with these two terms distribution transformers and power transformers so as the name indicates distribution transformers are the transformers installed at the distribution side at the consumer side and power transformers are the transformers which are located in the transmission system in the transmission network so first point is the distribution transformers are used in the distribution side to step down voltage to the distribution level so distribution transformers are always step down transformers they are used for stepping down the distribution voltage to a level suitable for the consumer equipments okay so now the power transformer so power transformers are located in generating stations and substations either to step down or step up voltage distribution transformers are always step down transformers but power transformers can be either step up or step down transformers so we know transformer located in the generating stations are used for stepping up the generating voltage of 11 kv to 220 or 120 110 kv like that so the transformers power transformers used at the generating station are step up transformers whereas in the substation these transformers are used for stepping down the voltage so power transformers can be either step up or step down transformers So next one the distribution transformers have ratings up to 200 to 500 kva the rating is in this particular range 
but power transformers can have ratings above 200 kV their rating is more than 200 kV so next one is regarding their size distribution transformers are smaller in size compared to power transformers whereas power transformers are larger in size so next one the distribution transformers are kept in operation all the 24 hours a day so we know it is located at the distribution side so we the consumers always requires electricity supply so these distribution transformers will be in operation all the 24 hours a day whereas in case of power transformers in a particular power system network or at a generating station or a substation there will be a number of transformers connected in parallel so depending on the load some of the transformers can be disconnected if the load on that power system is less some of the transformers can be disconnected so next one is regarding the load in the transformer in case of a distribution transformer the load varies from time to time so it depends on the consumers load so if we are turning on only less number of loads there will be a only a small load on the distribution transformer and if most of the consumers are turning on their apparatus electrical apparatus load on the distribution transformer will be high so it varies it depends on the consumer requirements but in case of uh, power transformer the load is always constant okay so load is always constant because in the epidu nammal oru power transformer ne adine mathu maximum load nammal adinathu provide cheyada shesham adutha transformer ne switch on cheyidullu so the load coming into a particular power transformer will be almost constant okay so now regarding the loads so as this distribution transformers are operating for all the day their iron loads in that transformers iron loads will occur for the entire time duration iron loss takes place 24 hours a day so we know that iron loss is the core loss which is constant so whenever the transformer is in operation the iron loss will occur so in distribution transformers iron loss will occur for all the 24 hours a day but copper loss depends on a load cycle copper losses vary we know that copper loss always depends on the load current load and load current so that is varying here but in case of power transformers both copper loss and iron loss occurs throughout whenever the transformer is in operation copper loss and iron loss occurs and copper loss is almost constant so in the previous constant we have said that load is always constant in a power transformer so copper loss depends on load as load is constant copper loss is almost constant okay so now regarding the efficiency the distribution transformers are designed to have maximum efficiency at a load which is much less than the full load namaku eppalum maximum efficiency il operate cheyanam so distribution transformer angane ende maximum load il alla eppalum work cheyunnathu load is vary kudal samayam adu light load il irikkum work cheyunnathu so it is designed to have an efficiency at a load which is much less than the full load eppalum full load il operate cheyunna oru machine anengil full load la maximum efficiency kittana reethiyil aayirikkum nammal adine design cheyyana so in case of a distribution transformer it does not always operate at its full load so it is designed to have its maximum efficiency at a load which is much less than the full load whereas power transformers usually operates near their full load and they are designed to have maximum efficiency at or near its full load the so next point is that in distribution transformers all day efficiency is considered so we know all day efficiency is energy output divided by energy input so we have studied all day efficiency and while studying all day efficiency we have said that this is used in distribution transformers and this is important because these transformers are operating for all the 24 hours a day so we have to consider the energy output and energy input so all day efficiency is considered in distribution transformers whereas in power transformers 
the efficiency is calculated as output power divided by input power. So next one, in case of distribution transformers, the voltage regulation is important. Okay, what is voltage regulation? Voltage regulation in Arnel, it is a measure of the voltage drop in that transformer. No load voltage and full load voltage in the middle difference in the measure. So it, it is an indication of voltage drop in the transformer. So our voltage variations on the distribution transformer. It will greatly affect the consumer equipments. So our voltage variation, voltage fluctuation, consumer and equipments failure IPO. So it is a distribution transformer that gives supply to us. So if its voltage regulation is not good, if the voltage regulation is poor, it will affect the consumer equipments. So it should be designed to have a very good voltage regulation. Voltage drop coravarikana. So for that it should have a small leakage reactants. Whereas in case of power transformers, the fault current limiting capacity is most the more important. The power system is located in the transmission system. So they are prone to short circuit faults in the power system network. In Korea, short circuit fault on dial, there will be very high amount of current flowing through the system. Kilo ampere's current, kilo ampere's of current will flow through the system. So we have to limit this particular current and for that the power transformers should have a very high value of leakage reactants. So in distribution transformer, voltage regulation is important. We should have a small leakage reactants in order to reduce the voltage drop. Whereas the power transformers in which the current limiting capacity is important, they should have a higher value of leakage reactants. So next category of transformers, the core type and shell type transformers. So we know core type transformer and shell type transformer. So the first point is in a core type transformer, the winding surrounds the core. The winding the core is surrounded by the windings. Whereas in a shell type transformer, there will be three limbs and the winding is provided over the central limb. The other two limbs surround this winding. So here, core surrounds the windings. In case of core type transformer, its design and construction is easy. But it is very difficult in case of shell type transformers. So next is core type transformers has low mechanical strength due to known bracing of windings. So here windings are not braced. Bracing means bracing is a mechanical structure to support the windings. So in case of core type transformer windings are not braced. So it will be having a low mechanical strength. Whereas shell type transformers have high mechanical strength. So next one, <coughs> reduction of leakage reactants is not easily possible in core type transformer. So reduction of leakage reactants is not easily possible. Whereas in case of shell type, reduction of leakage reactants is easily possible. Okay. In case of a shell type transformer, entire windings both low voltage winding and high voltage winding primary and secondary windings are located on the central limb located on a single limb itself so leakage flux will be less hence we can reduce the leakage reactants okay. core type le rand limb le atani windings located so there will be some amount of leakage flux and leakage reactants so next one the core type transformer can easily be dismantled for repair whereas shell type cannot be easily dismantled. In core type there will be better heat dissipation from the windings but in case of shell type the windings are surrounded by the core. There will be the core surrounding or covering the winding. So heat dissipation from the winding will be difficult. There will be some obstruction to the heat dissipation. So next one, in core type transformer, it has longer mean length of core and shorter mean length of coil turn. 
Hence, it is best suited for extra high voltage application. Whereas, shell type transformers are not suited for extra high voltage application. So, here this core type transformer have a longer mean length of core okay, and shorter length of coil or turn and it is suited for extra high voltage applications. So, here we are limbs winding a place. So, total or we utilize the core and the length it will be more compared to a shell type transformer and length of turn will be less. Our core type core and width width of core and double irikim. shell type le central limb in the width shell type le a central limb namala windings provide in the limb in the width and it is about twice that of the side limbs so length of turn length of one turn will be more in case of shell type so here length of core mean length of core is more and short mean length of coil turn so this is suited for extra high voltage applications whereas shell type is not suited for extra high voltage application.